The London Victory Club dancers right here. Please, a warm welcome. A very funny guy, would you please welcome Ward Smith. Yeah. <laughs> Hello, Tampa Bay, how you doing tonight, good? Yeah. yeah! Yeah, good to be back in Tampa Bay. I've been traveling around a lot, I've been all over the United States. It's good to be back home. Uh, last week I was in Valdosta, Georgia. It's good to see people with teeth once again. I like that. So, traveling around, it's good, it's good. We're all big kids, basically. That's where I'm coming from, we're all big kids. Are we all big kids tonight, huh? Yeah, Halloween wasn't too long ago. I had a good time on Halloween because that's always a lot of fun. People today, they don't, it's, oh my God, she's going up in this thing again. <laughs> Sweet pain, make me scream. <laughs> it looks like something in E.T. That was a great movie though, E.T. But let's get serious though. Something lands in my backyard at three o'clock in the morning with big eyes and looks like a dried up Um. I don't think I'm gonna go back into my kitchen and bring it back any Reese's Pieces, that's for sure. <laughs> I'm coming back with a shotgun and a hefty bag, folks. That's what I'm doing. <laughs> oh my God, well, this was fun on Halloween though, around here. This club was hopping on Halloween, man. Every place was hopping around on Halloween. I noticed though that there's no kids that are trick-or-treating anymore. When we were kids, we were some trick-or-treating mamma jammas, weren't we? Yeah, we were. We had it down to a science. We didn't have these little faggy, wimpy Kmart bags that said boo on them. No. We had mom's best pillowcase, that I'm right with that. Big old satin ones they got on a wedding night, man. You go two, three houses max, get that thing loaded down with candy, come dragging it home, dump it on the living room floor, go back to the same three houses, 
Trick or treat. What you hear before? It must have been a guy in the same costume. Fill it up. <laughs> Dumping on the living room floor, bring all your friends over, and you start trading, right? <laughs> we know what was going on. And you had candy for days. You had candy in your lunch boxes. You had candy in your shoes. You had candy in your in your bed for crying out loud. And the novelty wore off, and you kind of stuck it in mom's way, all that leftover candy, because mom has a good way of usually wiping out and destroying everything that belongs to you that's in her beaten path. But it always shows up around Christmas time in your Christmas stocking. And you know it's Halloween candy because it's got your little black and orange cats all over it and the pumpkins going er on it. <laughs> it's that candy you can't open up for a long time. Oh, childhood stuff. I was talking with the other guys about hanging out with the G.I. Joes. You guys remember G.I. Joes? Yeah. yeah. Kung Fu Grip, lifelike hair. Dun, 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 dun. I think Kung Fu Grip came about the same time that Barbie Camper did. <laughs> Joes home from the war. <laughs> Sure. I used to put Barbie doll clothes on my G.I. Joe so he wouldn't have to go to Vietnam. I was kind of a strange kid. My mother was the kind of woman you probably had the same kind of mother too. Mothers have a really nifty cleanup idea. If, if, your, if your little child comes home with a dirty face, mom would what? Take out a hanky, slobber on it, and then clean your face off with it. <laughs> my mom just went, <laughs> wash your face. How you doing, that? <laughs> I was in my old neighborhood, I, I saw a sign, it's still out there, it's been out there for 23 years, it says, slow children at play. <laughs> Some guys out there going, hey, Tommy, throw me the ball. Couple of things before I go. If Fred Flintstone knew that those large odor ribs would tip over his car, why did he order them at the end of every show? If you go to a funeral at night, do you have to turn the lights on your car off? <laughs> if God took acid, would he see people? <laughs> the band likes that one. <laughs> if you went to a horse jockey's house, would you see a little ceramic yuppie on the front lawn with a briefcase? If you only say things one time, does that make you dundant? <laughs> it's okay, it's a thinking crowd, you get that. Not so much laughter, just everybody kind of inwardly acknowledging the truth at this point. They're a very spiritual crowd and I like that. And finally, let me get out of here on this one. Do women in the shower also? So, <laughs> I don't know. Thank you very much, folks. We got a great show for coming up for you. Bye-bye. Ward Smith. A funny guy. Now we're going to the Johnny G Lion Band. <laughs> I love live TV. Go! Exchange student. Write Youth Exchange, Pueblo, Colorado, 81009. When you graduate from college, what will you be able to offer an employer?
I like working with people. I really like working with people. I really like people. I'm a people person. I'm eager. I'm eager. Eager. I think I'm eager. And I was president of five... Offer an employer something meaningful, practical work experience. A nationwide college program called Co-op Education can give you that competitive edge. And I'd even relocate. Right, Co-op Education. It's the experience you need for the job you want. Last year, the federal government wasted $600 million maintaining obsolete computers. It wasted $25 million on duplicate mailings and paid out over $5 billion in mistaken benefits. You'd think in all the years of man's development, we'd have learned by now how tragic it is to waste something you worked so hard to get. For more information on how your hard-earned tax dollars are being spent, call Citizens Against Government Waste, 1-800-USA-DEBT.